Slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing, to meet King Saul, with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands, and what can he have more but the kingdom? David, David, why does he receive such praise? Is he destined to take my throne? Greetings, your majesty. I come to offer you the gift of music to soothe your troubled heart. David, my soul is heavy. Play something for me, please. Yes, your majesty. And it came to pass on the morrow, that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played with his hand, as at other times, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand 1 Samuel 18.10. I will smite David with this javelin, he is a threat to my reign. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with him, and was departed from Saul. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. A few days later. Father, you should have seen David on the battlefield. He defeated Goliath and he saved us from the hands of our enemies. What are you saying, Jonathan? That David is greater than I that the people will love him more than they love their king. No, Father, I only speak of his bravery and the favor of the Lord upon him. Years later. Your Majesty, I have returned from the battlefield, as you requested. David, welcome back. Thank you, Your Majesty. Behold my elder daughter Merah, her will I give thee to wife. Only be thou valiant for me, and fight the Lord's battles. Let not mine hand be upon him but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. Who am I, and what is my life, or my father's family in Israel, that I should be son-in-law to the king? But it came to pass at the time when Merab Saul's daughter should have been given to David, that she was given unto Adriel the Maholathite to wife. And Michal, Saul's daughter, loved David, and they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. Michal loves David, I will give him Michal that she may be a snare to him, and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Thou shalt this day be my son-in-law in the one of the twain. Commune with David secretly, and say, Behold, the king hath delight in thee, and all his servants love thee, now therefore be the king's son-in-law. David, King Saul delights in you, we all love you, in fact the entire kingdom adores you, now therefore, be the king's son-in-law. Seemeth it to you a light thing to be a king's son-in-law, seeing that I am a poor man and lightly esteemed. Your Highness David responded by saying, does it seem like a light thing to become the king's son-in-law? Remember that I come from a humble background, I can't possibly afford the dowry. Thus shall ye say to David, The king desireth not any dowry, but to be avenged of the king's enemies. In reality, I want David to fall by the hand of the Philistines. The king does not desire any dowry from you. All he requires is something from a hundred Philistines to be avenged of the king's enemies. He will give you the details himself. I am pleased to hear that. 
I will give the king the hundred, in fact, I will give him two hundred of whatever it is that he requires from the Philistines. Wherefore David arose and went, he and his men, and slew of the Philistines two hundred men, that he might be the king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him Michal his daughter to wife. And Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David, and that Michal Saul's daughter loved him. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David, and Saul became David's enemy continually. David, my friend, I'm glad to see you. You've been missed. Thank you, Jonathan. It's been a while since I've been away fighting battles for your father. I've heard of your victories, but I worry for you, David. My father's jealousy burns against you. I've noticed his troubled heart, Jonathan, but I trust in the Lord's plan for me. His anointing on me cannot be thwarted. You speak with such faith and conviction, David. You inspire me, but my father's anger grows with each passing day. Jonathan, our friendship is a gift from God. Nothing can separate us. The Lord is with us. Of course, David, we promise to be loyal to each other and to our families forever. Exactly. Let's honor that covenant, my friend. Tell me if there is any danger, and I will be ready to face it alongside you. David, my heart is torn. I will find out my father's intentions and let you know. But you must be cautious. Go into hiding until I send word. I trust you, Jonathan. Your loyalty means everything to me. I will be patient and wait for your message. David, my father's anger towards you is great. He seeks to kill you. You must flee for your life. I had hoped for better, Jonathan. But I understand. The Lord will guide me and protect me from harm. I cannot bear this separation, my brother. But we must trust in God's plan. I promise to gather information and keep you informed. Thank you, Jonathan. Your friendship is a blessing that sustains me in these difficult times. Father, why must you seek David's life? He has done no wrong. He has been loyal to you and has brought great victories to our kingdom. He is a threat to my reign. The Lord has turned against me and chosen him to be king in my place. David is innocent of any wrongdoing, Father. Please reconsider. Let your anger subside, and let us all live in peace. Jonathan, you speak with such conviction. But I fear for my throne. If I spare David, will you stand by my side, loyal to your father? Father, David is my dear friend, and I love him as a brother. But I also love you. I cannot choose between you. Please, let us find another way. Very well, Jonathan. For your sake, I will spare David's life. But know that I am watching his every move. David, hidden in the wilderness, receives a secret message from Jonathan, carried by a trusted servant. He reads the letter, hope filling his eyes. Jonathan has risked everything to save me. I am forever grateful for his love and loyalty. Priest Ahimelech, I need your help. Can you spare some bread for my men and me? David, why are you alone? Where is your mighty army? I am on a secret mission for the king, Ahimelech. My men are waiting for me elsewhere. Now therefore what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in mine hand, or what there is present. There is no common bread under mine hand, but there is hallowed bread, if the young men have kept themselves at least from women. Of a truth women have been kept from us about these three days, since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in a manner common, yea, though it was sanctified this day in the vessel. So the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread there but the shoe bread that was taken from before the Lord, to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord, and his name was Doeg, an Edomite, the chiefest of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. Take whatever you need, David. We have only consecrated bread, but it is all we can offer. Thank you, Ahimelech. And do you have a weapon here, by any chance? A weapon? We have Goliath's sword here, the one you used to slay him. It's kept behind the ephod. Perfect. Abner, have you heard anything about David? Where is he? My lord, David has fled from Jerusalem. He sought refuge in Nob, with Ahimelech the priest. What? How dare he defy me? David went to Ahimelech seeking provisions and a weapon, my lord. A weapon? Is he planning to rise against me? Tell me, Doeg, what did you see? Did Ahimelech help David? Yes, my lord, Ahimelech gave David bread and Goliath's sword. They spoke for a while. How could Ahimelech betray me? Abner, 
Gather my men. We will go to Nob and make them pay for their treachery. Then the king sent to call Ahimelech the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all his father's house, the priests that were in Nob, and they came all of them to the king. Hear now, thou son of Ahitub. Here I am, my lord. Why have ye conspired against me, thou and the son of Jesse, in that thou hast given him bread, and a sword, and hast inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me, to lie in wait, as at this day? And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David, which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth at thy bidding, and is honorable in thine house? Did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Be it far from me. Let not the king impute anything unto his servant, nor to all the house of my father, for thy servant knew nothing of all this, less or more. Thou shalt surely die, Ahimelech, thou, and all thy father's house. Footmen, turn, and slay the priests of the Lord, because their hand also is with David, and because they knew when he fled, and did not show it to me. We are sorry your majesty but as you were having your heated discussion with priest Ahimelech, we decided that none of us, footmen, would put forth our hand to fall upon the priests of the Lord. How dare you defy my orders? However, I understand that you fear the Lord. Doeg, turn thou, and fall upon the priests. And Doeg the Edomite turned and he fell upon the priests, and slew on that day fourscore and five persons that did wear a linen ephod. And Nob, the city of the priests, smote he with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children and sucklings, and oxen, and asses, and sheep, with the edge of the sword. King of Moab, let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth, and be with you, till I know what God will do for me. Bring them before me, they can dwell with me all the while that you are in the hole. Thank you, I appreciate that. And the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hold, depart, and get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed, and came into the forest of Hereth. Master David, future king of Israel, as you know that I am one of the sons of Ahimelech the son of Ahitu, named Abiathar. I escaped, and fled after Saul had the Lord's priest slain. My father, Ahimelech, is no more. I am very sorry to hear that. I knew at the day, when Dog the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of thy father's house. Abide thou with me, fear not, for he that seeketh my life seeketh thy life, but with me thou shalt be in safeguard. Yes, thank you Master David. The royal court of King Saul is filled with tension. King Saul paces back and forth, wearing a troubled expression on his face. His advisor, Abner, stands nearby, observing the king's restlessness. Abner, bring me news of David's whereabouts. He continues to elude me, and it infuriates me to no end. My lord, we have received word that David and his men are hiding in the wilderness of Maom. Maom, then let us gather our forces and bring an end to this once and for all. Fetch my armor and prepare the troops. We must seek the Lord's guidance. Let us pray for his wisdom and protection. Mighty men, let us pray. O oh Lord, our refuge and strength, guide us in this time of trouble. Show us the path to righteousness and deliver us from the hands of our enemies. Amen. Amen. David and his men find refuge in a hidden cave, seeking shelter from the scorching sun. As they rest, a conversation ensues. David, how much longer can we hide? King Saul's army grows stronger each day. Fear not, my friends. The Lord has proven faithful thus far, and he will continue to protect us. Let us trust in his plan. But David... This may be our only chance to strike back and end this madness. King Saul is vulnerable. Why not take advantage of it? No, my brother. We shall not harm the anointed of the Lord. Vengeance is his, not ours. Let us show mercy, even when it is not deserved. 
David and his men stumble upon a cave where King Saul and his men are resting. They remain hidden, witnessing the sight before them. This cave seems like a perfect place to rest. We can regain our strength here. David, this is the opportunity we've been waiting for. The Lord has delivered King Saul into your hands. No, I cannot bring myself to harm him. He is still the anointed king, chosen by God. Let us respect the Lord's anointing. David silently approaches King Saul and cuts off a piece of his robe, careful not to harm him. He then retreats to a safe distance. My Lord, King Saul. Who calls my name? It is I, David. Look, I have a piece of your robe in my hand. I could have killed you, but I spared your life, for you are the Lord's anointed. David, my son, you are more righteous than I. May the Lord bless and protect you. I now know that you will one day be king. David and his men resume their journey, knowing that the Lord has delivered them from harm once again. They march forward, strengthened by their faith in God's plan. David and his men are resting after their battles. They are tired and hungry. We've been protecting Nabal's shepherds and sheep, but now we need provisions. Send a message to Nabal and ask for food. Yes, my king, I'll go right away. Greetings, Nabal sir. I come on behalf of David, the anointed one of Israel. We have been protecting your shepherds and sheep in the wilderness, and now we ask for some provisions. Who is this David and who is the son of Jesse? I've never heard of him. There are many rebellious men these days. Shall I then take my bread, and my water, and the sheep that I slaughtered for my shearers, and give it unto men, whom I know not whence they be? My Lord has been good to your shepherds, and we have not harmed them. We kindly request some food to sustain us. Why should we provide for you? Be gone. David's servant returns to camp and relays the encounter to David. Nabal has shown us disrespect. Ready your swords, men. We shall go and retrieve what is rightfully ours. Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow hath in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertained unto him, and he hath requited me evil for good. So and more also do God unto the enemies of David, if I leave of all that pertained to him by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall. Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them, but the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt, neither missed we anything, as long as we were conversant with them, when we were in the fields. They were a wall unto us both by night and day, all the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Now therefore know and consider what thou wilt do, for evil is determined against our master, and against all his household, for he is such a son of Belial, that a man cannot speak to him. We will take two hundred loaves, and two bottles of wine, and five sheep ready dressed, and five measures of parched corn, and an hundred clusters of raisins, and two hundred cakes of figs, lay them on asses, and take them to David and his mighty men. Make haste. Yes, madam. Go on before me, behold, I come after you. Make sure no one speaks of this to my husband Nabal. And they girded on every man his sword. And David also girded on his sword, and there went up after David about four hundred men, and two hundred abode by the stuff. David and his men approach Nabal's estate, swords at their sides. Abigail, Nabal's wife, rushes out to meet them, bringing supplies. Please, my lord, forgive my husband's foolishness. Take these provisions as a gesture of peace. Upon me, my lord, upon me let this iniquity be, and let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience, and hear the words of thine handmaid. Let not my lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him, 
but I thine handmaid saw not the young men of my Lord, whom thou didst send. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholden thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let thine enemies, and they that seek evil to my Lord, be as Nabal. And now this blessing which thine handmaid hath brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil hath not been found in thee all thy days. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee, and to seek thy soul, but the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God, and the souls of thine enemies, them shall he sling out, as out of the middle of a sling, and it shall come to pass, when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he hath spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offence of heart unto my Lord, either that thou hast shed blood causeless, or that my Lord hath avenged himself, but when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. Who are you, woman? I am Abigail, wife of Nabal. I heard of your encounter with my husband. Please, do not bring bloodshed upon our household. Take these supplies and forgive his arrogance. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me, and blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou, which hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood, and from avenging myself with mine own hand. For in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hadst hasted and come to meet me, surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall. Your wisdom has saved your household today. May the Lord bless you, Abigail. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him. Go up in peace to thine house, see, I have hearkened to thy voice, and have accepted thy person. Thank you. And Abigail came to Nabal, and, behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken. Wherefore she told him nothing, less or more, until the morning light. Yesterday, David and his mighty men were en route here with the intent of causing violence. They vowed to obliterate everything on this estate. It was only through God's grace that I managed to safeguard all our lives by providing them with provisions and sheep. Your hubris and arrogance nearly jeopardized our lives. What's wrong with assisting those in need? Are you aware that David and his men could have forcibly taken all our livestock and agricultural goods? Instead, they requested we contribute from our surplus food. You even enjoyed a lavish feast last night, indicating our abundant blessings in terms of food and assets. Yet your pride and lack of empathy for others led you to be miserly. Surely, you resemble the offspring of Belial. I am in pain. Help, help, heart attack. I will call the doctor. But it came to pass in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. And it came to pass about ten days after, that the Lord smote Nabal, that he died. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord, that hath pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and hath kept his servant from evil, for the Lord hath returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. And David sent and communed with Abigail, to take her to him to wife. And when the servants of David were come to Abigail to Carmel, they spake unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee, to take thee to him to wife. And she arose, and bowed herself on her face to the earth, and said, Behold, let thine handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. And Abigail hasted, and arose, and rode upon an ass, with five damsels of hers that went after her, and she went after the messengers of David, and became his wife. David also took Ahinom of Jezreel, and they were also both of them his wives. But Saul had given Michal his daughter, David's wife, to Falti the son of Laish, which was of Galam. My Queen Abigail. My King David. In these chapters, we witness a series of events involving David, King Saul, and others, filled with lessons that can guide us in our Christian journey. 
1. Friendship. 1 Samuel 20 12 to 13 says, And Jonathan said to David, The Lord, the God of Israel, be witness. When I have sounded out my father, about this time tomorrow, or the third day, behold, if he is well disposed toward David, shall I not then send and disclose it to you? This verse highlights the deep friendship and loyalty between David and Jonathan, reminding us of the importance of godly friendships in our lives. 2. Faith in God's protection. Throughout these chapters, David's unwavering faith in God's protection and guidance stands out. Despite being pursued by Saul, he consistently seeks refuge in the Lord. 3. Mercy and Forgiveness David demonstrates mercy and forgiveness toward Saul, even when he has the opportunity to harm him. This shows the importance of forgiving others, as stated in Matthew 6 14-15. 4. Integrity in Difficult Situations David's integrity in various challenging situations sets an example for us. He refuses to harm God's anointed, even when it might have seemed justified. 5. Seeking God's will, David frequently consults God for guidance, such as inquiring about whether to engage in battles. This emphasizes the importance of seeking God's will in our decisions, as seen in Proverbs 3, 5-6. 6. Humility and Patience David's humility and patience shine when he waits for God's timing to become king. This reminds us of the value of humility and trusting God's timing. James 4:10, 7. 1 Samuel 24, 6. Consequences of harm. The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to put out my hand against him, seeing he is the Lord's anointed. David's refusal to harm Saul, the Lord's anointed, reminds us of the consequences of acting against God's chosen ones. And 8. 1 Samuel 26. 23. God's judgment. The Lord rewards every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord gave you into my hand today, and I would not put out my hand against the Lord's anointed. David acknowledges that God is the ultimate judge and that he rewards righteousness and faithfulness. These chapters in 1 Samuel offer valuable insights into faith, integrity, and seeking God's will. They encourage us to walk in faith, forgiveness, and humility in our Christian journey. Hey everyone, I've been thinking about the story of David and Nabal in 1 Samuel 25. It's always struck me as quite complex. David had been protecting Nabal's shepherds and flocks in the wilderness, but Nabal refused to help him when David's men asked for provisions. Wasn't Nabal justified in refusing to help, given that David's men hadn't been specifically asked to protect Nabal's property? That's a good point, John. Nabal did have the right to refuse assistance. However, I think what angered David was not just the refusal but the disrespectful and harsh words that Nabal used when he responded. It's important to note that in the Bible, there's often more than just the surface action at play. Absolutely, Michael. In fact, some commentaries suggest that Nabal's name, which means, fool, hints at his character. His harshness and ingratitude might have been his deeper issue. Proverbs 14.21 reminds us that, whoever despises his neighbor is a sinner, but blessed is he who is generous to the poor. And speaking of generosity, let's not forget Abigail's role in this story. She showed great wisdom and generosity in stepping in to prevent a disaster. She knew Nabal's character and took responsibility for making amends. That's true, Rachel. Abigail's actions were commendable. David recognized her wisdom and her understanding of God's will, which is why he blessed her in 1 Samuel 25, 32-33. So, what can we learn from this? It seems like Nabal's real guilt wasn't just about the refusal to give provisions but his ungodly character and arrogance. And Abigail's actions highlight the importance of wisdom and humility. That's a good summary, John. We can learn about the consequences of arrogance and the value of wisdom, humility, and seeking God's will in our actions. It's a reminder that God looks beyond our actions to our hearts. And it also teaches us about the importance of reconciliation and preventing unnecessary conflict, which aligns with what Jesus taught about peacemaking in Matthew 5, 9. 
So, in our own lives, let's strive for the wisdom of Abigail, the humility of David, and the discernment to see beyond the surface actions to the heart of the matter, just as God does. Lessons learned from the characters Saul, David, Abner, Doeg, Nabal, and Nabal's servant in the context of their virtues and actions. As we delve into the stories of Saul, David, Abner, Doeg, Nabal, and Nabal's servant in 1 Samuel, there are valuable lessons and virtues to glean from their lives that can guide us in our own Christian journey. Saul. Saul's life teaches us about the consequences of disobedience and the dangers of pride. His refusal to follow God's commands ultimately led to his downfall. The lesson here is the importance of obedience to God's will and the danger of arrogance. David. David's unwavering faith in God, his forgiveness, and his humility in the face of adversity are virtues we can emulate. His relationship with God and his reliance on prayer are inspiring examples for our own walk with Christ. Abner. Abner's loyalty to his king, Saul, is commendable, but his manipulation and political maneuvering remind us that loyalty should be guided by righteousness and truth, not personal gain. Doeg. Doeg's willingness to carry out Saul's ruthless orders serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of blindly following immoral commands. We should always assess our actions in light of God's moral principles. Nabal. Nabal's harshness and ingratitude contrast sharply with Abigail's wisdom and generosity. Nabal serves as a warning against pride and a lack of gratitude for God's blessings. Abigail's virtues of wisdom and peacemaking are qualities to aspire to. Nabal's servant. The servant who reported Nabal's actions to Abigail demonstrated courage and wisdom. His actions stopped a potential massacre, illustrating the importance of speaking up for what is right, even when it's difficult. In emulating these characters, we should strive for obedience to God's will, faith, forgiveness, humility, loyalty guided by righteousness, discernment in our actions, gratitude for God's blessings, and the courage to stand up for righteousness. By doing so, we can navigate life's challenges and walk more closely with Christ. In 1 Samuel 19-26, we witness a tapestry of events and characters that teach us profound lessons for our Christian walk. It's a narrative of faith, obedience, forgiveness, wisdom, humility, and the consequences of pride and disobedience. The essence of these chapters can be distilled into this. To walk closely with the Lord, we must seek His guidance, trust in His timing, and show unwavering faith, even in the face of adversity. We must forgive as we've been forgiven, display wisdom in our interactions, and remain humble, knowing that God exalts the humble. Avoid the pitfalls of arrogance and disobedience that Saul and Doak fell into, for they serve as warnings of the destructive power of pride and ungodly actions. Instead, embrace the values of David's faith. Abigail's wisdom, and Nabal's servant's courage in speaking up for righteousness. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude for the wisdom and guidance found in your word. As we reflect on the lessons from 1 Samuel 19 to 26, we ask for your help in applying them to our lives. Lord, grant us unwavering faith in your protection and guidance, just as David displayed in his trials. Help us to forgive others as you have forgiven us and to walk in humility, trusting in your timing for our lives. May we avoid the pitfalls of pride and disobedience that Saul and Doge exemplified, and instead, seek righteousness in all our actions. Grant us the wisdom of Abigail and the courage to stand up for what is right, even when it's difficult. We pray that we may walk closely with you, Lord, and uphold the values of faith, wisdom, humility, and righteousness in our daily lives. May our actions and choices be a reflection of your love and grace. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning into this episode of our Bible study series. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, we encourage you to do so, ensuring you receive notifications whenever we release new content. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.